en español te voy a decir, es un gusto volverte a ver. Gracias. Mucho gusto. Pues, igualmente. Me vi la película Hypnotic. ¿Por qué decidiste? Why did you, why you choose making this after Alita? Oh, it was supposed to be made before Alita, for sure. I mean, I, I but after Alita, which was a sci-fi film, which I hadn't done before, kind of gave me even more permission to do something that was outside of my wheelhouse, which wasn't any of the other genres that I've done, which I've done a lot, horror, action, comedy, children's films, sci-fi. And I, I always wanted to do this Hitchcock thriller because I came up with it 20 years ago. I came up with it in 2002 because Vertigo had come out, had been rediscovered, and I was watching that a lot. I go, I'd always loved the Hitchcock movies. One word titles, they were very, you know, hypnotic and um, a lot of twists. I, and I started writing it 20 years ago and, and I, I finally finished it just before Alita and then Alita took over and then COVID hit. And so and finally we got made it. Yeah. And then Mandalorian. Yeah. And then Disney came. Yeah, Mandalorian and then this now. So I'm glad I got to finally make it. How do you think about the Mexican films? How do you think about the Mexican right now, the Mexican movies right now? Well, I mean, they've just always been, for me, an inspiration. The filmmakers that come out of there have always just been such, such class filmmakers. I grew up in a great era where, you know, I was around Chivo and, you know, Guillermo and, and uh, Cuaron. And uh, it's just to hear the studios talk so highly of Mexican filmmakers, you know, because uh, the sort of the Latin contingency before that had, a, uh, for reason, had a lot of chip on their shoulder a lot of times. So they would they would uh, be harder to work with, which made it harder for us to get movies made, and not necessarily from Mexico, but from U.S. as well. And I, and I liked that I was part of this new generation where people wanted to work with uh, these filmmakers because of their artistry and it flipped the script. It made the whole country more accepting of anything that was going to come out of Mexico. So it shows what, how amazing how just, you know, a handful of people can change the tide like that for Mexican cinema. Thank you. So, and, and, and they got to be filmmakers because of the support they had in Mexico. So that, you know, is tremendous. El Santo. I, I thought that you will be a great director for an um, El Santo I movie. I was doing, I was almost going to do a, a Santo type movie uh, many with, times. The, the, well, then, then the rights became available for Santo himself and Son of Santo and all this. Um, could happen. You know, I had, I had a whole show called Lucha Underground on my El Rey network. It was, it was slowly starting to bring that back. But then now, I, I don't have that show anymore. But I thought this, that was a good path to get people into, first, just the Mexican wrestling style and their showmanship, and then, and then bring back the granddaddy of all, which is El Santo. He's still huge. People buy dolls for him. They don't even know who he is. And I'm like, we got to bring, bring him back. It's, He's very anxious to, 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 to work yeah, something I with you. I, made, I don't know if I talked to him or somebody who knew him or something. He's a very good. But yeah. Okay, last question. Since El Mariachi to Hypnotic, tell me one thing that hasn't changed for, of you as, as a filmmaker, that always do, that doesn't change. I know that technology has changed. Uh, I don't know, the budget has changed, but there must be something since El Mariachi through Hypnotic that you are still doing the same. Well, Mariachi, you know, I made completely by myself. Yes. So like even here, there's two people in the yeah. there was, I was the sound guy and the camera guy and the director because I had to, I did the sound separate and I then synced it by end. Yeah. So that kind of filmmaking hasn't changed for me. I like that if everything else goes away, which happened on Hypnotic, you know, where the COVID shutdowns meant our budget kept shrinking and our shooting schedule kept sh shrinking to the point where it was like, we have to shoot this mariachi style. I'm taking the camera. I'm doing all the jobs again. I'm doing the lighting. I'm doing all that and we're going to have to do all the shortcuts. I'm going to have to edit in camera a lot. We're going to have to shoot this with a schedule that was barely twice the schedule of mariachi. <laughs> so that's like, we're just like shooting the, like the old days. And that's why you're glad you don't give up those. You never get to be a big filmmaker where everyone does everything for you because then now you're, now you're screwed, you know. So I've always kept that independent spirit and make my independent films. And I'll do a big movie to learn, but then I'll come back and I'll do ones that I completely control, that my kids and I make together. I made mariachi out of my home. I still make all my movies out of my home, in my own home studio. I still feel like that hasn't changed. I never went to Hollywood. I stayed home and built my 
film community around me and my film crews. So I tell people, if you want to be a filmmaker, don't go anywhere, stay home. <laughs> Create it around you and it changes the whole community. It changes the whole world around you and that's your world. A typical TV, you are an, an atypical <laughs> film director. Oh, thank you, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure.